Once upon a time, there was a capybara who wasn't a very good chef. He hated waiting for food to cook. So this capybara couldn't help but eat the ingredients as he went along. This resulted in dinners half finished or too small to be considered a meal. Even though he knew this about himself, he wasn't about to give up on cooking. Going out and munching on soft basil leaves made him crave pizza. With bits of basil in his mouth, he set off towards the library to find the perfect recipe. It would work out this time, right? At the library, he pulled a bunch of cookbooks off the shelf, and immediately, there's a problem. There were too many good recipes to choose from. For a moment, he wondered if he should change his mind and not make pizza. Not to mention, all the pictures looked mouth-wateringly good. With his motivation slipping, he grabbed a bag of popcorn from the vending machine outside. Back at his reading nook, the popcorn perked him up, and he ended up finding a recipe that looked doable, not too difficult. He grabbed the book and headed back home. At home, he dropped off the recipe book so he could collect ingredients from his garden. After grabbing a few herbs and carrots, he decided to take a break. He sat in the sun for a bit until he heard a rustling sound. It startled him, but he brushed it off. Maybe it was a bird nesting in a bush? He had started to turn back to continue gathering, but then he heard a giggle. Birds don't giggle. He narrowed his eyes. There was no way he could ignore someone lurking outside his house. He had to check it out. Following the rustling sound, he ended up in front of the tomatoes. Tentatively, he inched closer to the leaves, afraid of what he would find. Then a nose poked out of the rustling leaves. It was his friend, but this capybara wasn't happy to see him. Why are you hiding in my plants? You're going to damage them. His friend smiled back warmly. Well, I saw you at the library looking through cookbooks, and I thought you might be making something. I want to help. Still frowning, he passed his friend a basket. Fine, help me collect the ingredients. With the ingredients all laid out on the kitchen table, the two capybaras looked at each other warily. There was tension in the air, as each animal had their own agenda. The friend wanted to protect the ingredients so that they could make it into the pizza. He knew that they were in danger of being eaten. And the ingredient eater? Well, he had good intentions to make the pizza, but there was also a good chance he would eat them all. So they glared at each other until they sighed and finally decided to play nice and work together. The capybara chef flipped through the cookbook with a discerning eye. He was going to be in charge of dictating the instructions, but not in charge of handling the ingredients. That was his friend's job. So far, none of the ingredients had been eaten, and they were holding each other accountable. As his friend kneaded the dough, he pointed emphatically at the example photo. The pizza dough in the photo looked way prettier than theirs, so he began to complain about the evils of Photoshop. His friend was vaguely listening, mostly enjoying the feeling of the dough, squishing underneath his fingertips. Success was on the horizon. They finished assembling the pizza and it was finally in the oven. Once the pizza started to cook, a cheesy aroma wafted out of the kitchen window. The smell traveled through the garden and out onto the side road where the capybara's neighbor was walking back from the grocery store. She sniffed the air and headed towards her neighbor's house. Once she reached the window, she dug her hand into her bag and held up a bottle of sparkling peach juice. A lady of few words, her intentions were clear. She wanted to join them for dinner. Unable to refuse the offer of such a delicious drink, they warmly invited her inside. Just as the pizza was divided up between them, his neighbor pulled out another surprise from her bag. It was a microphone and a speaker. Her eyes sparkled as she placed the microphone in her neighbor's hand. Karaoke? No way he would encourage this. He would sing, but he would sing so bad that she would put the microphone back in her bag. However, that didn't happen. He started to have fun, and the other two joined in, badly singing and dancing into the night.